everyone and welcome to the Chrissy Beach and we have a jam-packed show for you as usual. So first of all, we're going to see a dream come true of a six-year-old with spina bifida. We'll also be chatting to Paul Manners, who's an inspirational songwriter and event host. And I'll also be speaking to Michelle Inch, founder of Poor Perfection, about the ups and downs of starting a business. And she's also brought on a couple of her little friends as well. But first of all, without further ado, let's speak to Ian and Helena with the news. Hello. 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 How are you? How are you? I'm very well. I'm looking forward to having okay. our very little friends in the studio. <laughs> Hopefully there won't be any little accidents. Yeah. No oh, corgis. We, we, we only talk about corgis, nothing else. But. We do. Now, actually, being on a doggy fluffy route, I'm going to start with um, Lupo. Lupe the Cocker Spaniel, oh, that's Kate and William's dog. Yes. Um, there's a young lady called Abigail King who's bringing out a book about Lupo and the adventures of Lupo, mm -hmm. and it's going to involve the whole of Buckingham Palace, the dogs, the Queen's oh. Corgis, the everything. But I think she's managed to copyright it, so obviously is in oh. the midst of writing these books, which is really quite yeah. exciting. And she's actually got a Cocker Spaniel herself and walks through Kensington Gardens, and it made her think, oh, imagine if we... You know, if I started writing a book, and so that's really exciting because oh. you can imagine they'll bring. I'm sure he'll bring. She will, sorry, bring Prince George into it, and yeah, be all these adventures. And Helen, are you trying to hide your face with that? There's, there's yeah. be, absolutely, there's going to be. <laughs> this is me, and then you can read the next it, one. It, it, it's a, <laughs> sorry, did, 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 if you can notice a pair of eyes over the top of the, of, you know, it, it's me. Hello, it's folks. Ian's eyes. Where are they? Going on to. Uh, I, I have a surprise today. What surprise do you have? I'm not surprised. What surprise do you have today? It's a very exciting surprise. <laughs> it's that look on your face. For me, it's very exciting. We've actually discovered a new royal residence that hasn't been known about for a hundred years. Really? And we've found it today. Wow. By sheer coincidence. Uh, and it was a royal residence that belonged to Princess Victoria, the granddaughter of Queen Victoria, and yes. Lord Earl Macbatten of Burma. How well, did no, you find no, accidentally? Well, uh, we, we've discovered this by sheer accident. It was up very accent. early this morning, doing a lot of research. I will, I've been, I've been <laughs> wow. up for about nine hours today, from about three o'clock in the morning, because I got so excited about <laughs> finding this whole thing. And the incredible stories around it. And the big surprise is that you've been invited to film there first. No! Are you serious? And oh, yeah! Yay. <laughs> oh, wait, it's not what I'm going. going. <laughs> Soon, hopefully. Oh gosh, whereabouts is it then? It's, in, it's in central London, okay. but Ooh. obviously at the moment we want to keep this, and I'm sure you do as a surprise. Yes, for, definitely. So we can actually bring it on a future show. Oh, but, but the history behind it is unbelievable. Okay. So I wow, thought, really I, I, looking forward to for that. For me, just as someone who's really interested in the royal history as yeah. well, it's just something that's it's totally amazing. different. It's, it's a business thing. Isn't it, it, it's, well, it's a so business it's thing. It really is. I mean, it's, yeah. it's incredible. And, and the crazy part of it was that the owners. It's a commercial establishment. The owners didn't even know. They didn't, oh They didn't gosh. even know. In fact, they're, they're more surprised than I was when I told them <laughs> this is the history of their establishment. Hmm. That could be quite beneficial for them, couldn't it? It's, it's, I think it's going to actually add to them a lot because, of course. I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, interest. Um, yeah. I think uh, this We've got to get spring, filming quickly, yeah? Well, the, the, absolutely. This spring, summer, I think there's going to be a lot of royal things going mm. on. You know, I, I still feel that the engagement's going to be announced. I think that's going to happen. You know, the romantic in me says that, yeah. the, you know, um, the, the engagement's going to be announced. You know, and, and I think there's, there's lots of other things. Obviously, the birthday of Prince George, the 22nd mm. of July. There's loads of celebrations. I can't believe it's 10 months. No. 10 months already. I know. Gosh. And, <laughs> and look at the furor that's been sort of caused mm. all the time with it. So I, th I think, you know, it's going to be a very exciting time again. It's going to be a big summer, and I predict, my big prediction of the night is another royal wedding April next year. Really? April next year. April next year. Go on, Chrissy, hold him to it. Right, I, I, have, to, I, I have to write all this think. down because it keeps making all these <laughs> what assumptions, promises, so let, let's yeah. see if it comes true. At least we've got evidence because we're recording the show, so. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll check. <laughs> you check back. Yeah, <laughs> Otherwise it'll be to the tower. <laughs> let's move on to a sort of more Hollywoody yes. scenario and move away from the morals for a bit. So Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt mm -hmm. starring in Edge of Tomorrow. And they've recently, yeah, yeah, it's really, you know, it's all about repeating situations. Mm -hmm. And they've actually, what they're doing, it's actually Tom, Tom Cruise's idea. And they've been to three, well, they're in the process, I think, of doing three premieres. I heard about that. I London, sure. yeah. Paris and, and New York. York. Yeah. 
So that's quite How exciting. Can I think? So this is tiring, <laughs> but a very clever idea, which yeah. was made up by Tom Cruise, because obviously that's the whole idea of the film. Mm -hmm. So quite exciting. That's so really good. Look forward to seeing that. Person that thinks outside the box, right? Yeah, he does. He's very mm -hmm. good. He does. He is, um, he's he's very good with his uh, his fans, and he's mm -hmm. always you know on the red carpet and talking to people and photographs and selfies and. You know, yeah, he, he joins is. in, talks to people, and you know, he takes care, he does, which, is, he does. which is a lovely sign. And someone who's refusing to go outside the box at the moment is Prince Charles. Oh, oh sit down. <laughs> but basically, at the moment, there is a thing called this soft handover, which he's now refusing to do. Hmm. And the soft handover is where he's taken up a lot more of the engagements that the Queen is doing, or would have done. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a gradual handover of power from the Queen to Charles. But part of that is keeping within the royal etiquette of not talking about any political matters or any other you matters know, at all. I, again, I have a little feeling about it. I think it's a bit of an unfortunate situation recently. And I think sometimes people have to have their own opinions. And mm. especially if they're in little private chats and things are reported, I think it's not too fair. I don't know. I, 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 but we I, won't go down a you know, I, I, political I, 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 route in any way. It's the start of another article. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, we need to keep score? We, we don't know. We, we don't know. <laughs> no. Because every show, no, without fail, there's a In the best <laughs> no, it's good. You're allowed, you're allowed to disagree, don't worry. Yes, it you're allowed to disagree. <laughs> I know. Um, Kim Kardashian. Yes has married Keanu West. Yes. I'm, I'm quite relieved, actually, because it's been a big <laughs> build-up, hasn't it? Why are you relieved? I mean, it has. I just, <laughs> now, did you yeah. go to the wedding? That's my um, question. No. Oh, yeah, you turned them down, didn't you? Because yeah. you had something else. Yeah, I've had loads of things. Come back here, so I'm just for you, just for you. There's no contest. I just... It's been such a long old, you know, yeah. drive up to it. And, you know, great. I mean, they love each other and I'm really pleased. But it was a, they've got great, you know, cars and fanfare. And I think they're doing lots of filming for the show. Yeah. And I think they had um, in Paris something the day before. And I mean, great run up to it. I don't, you it's know. It's exhausting whatever. for them. Yeah. Exhausting. But it's all money making. Yeah, well. yeah. So the highest bidder will um, obviously print the pictures and everything. So it's a multi million pound deal. Mm. I think Beyonce and her husband were supposed to be there, but they, they didn't go along because it was like a, a massive circus and they didn't want the, to be filmed as part of it. Oh. But also, I think there was someone else that was chosen to sing at the wedding, which may have been the reason why Beyonce didn't want to go along. Oh, well, never mind. They've got enough uh, fans. <laughs> they <laughs> have. <laughs> anyway, I'm relieved. I know it's, you know, it sounds well, a bit... Do, do you know, know I, I, I think I, I, I can never sort of, you know, I, I'm constantly amazed by the Kardashians. Because an, another generation has suddenly popped up. Do you know, I, I, I used to uh, I used to religiously watch this every week. I love the Kardashians. I love mm. anything like this at all. Uh, and when I was watching the Kardashians, there was these little sort of tiny tots up to about you know the, <laughs> the, the guys the and the father's knee. And all of a sudden, now that they're, they're you know they're, they're, they're six foot you know they're hanging and they're out with Justin and Bieber and yeah <laughs> you know uh, but, but those ten years Makes of my us life feel gone. Old, doesn't it? Those ten years of my life gone. It's, 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 it's all mixed up with the Kardashians. <laughs> and strangely enough, last year we bumped into them. Seriously, oh, yeah, we bumped, yeah, we bumped into the Kardashians. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember, yeah, I remember that. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> where was it? At the entourage, at the Athenaeum Hotel. Oh, right, okay. they, they took the whole top floor of the Athenaeum Hotel yeah. uh, for the it. summer. Mm -hmm. um, and we used to bump into them because that's where we were doing a lot of our filming okay. as well. Mm. So, yeah. They seem very Why nice, didn't you film actually. them? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well I, I think part of the reason was these ten burly security guards <laughs> <laughs> that used to follow them everywhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we we could see it was a, a little head you know, be. bit between their shoulders. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, though, about the wedding that I did, did like is obviously the dress. Mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian's dress it was lovely, which it was supposed to be sort of modelled on Kate Middleton's dress with the lace. Yeah. But obviously, it was a little bit more raunchy, so you could see her back and everything. Mm -hmm. So. But um, that was lovely, and it was good, Givenchy, and it was made by Riccardo Tisky, who's one of their friends. Um, oh, so it's beautiful. Nice. Have you seen the dress? No, I haven't. It's lovely. Well, I it's not done, really. So well, like... it's actually not really been released too oh, much because okay. there's only a few snippets because they've not allowed it. Yeah, so it will yeah, be so flooding the, the market soon. Yeah. Okay. But, um, it's, it's very nice. And we're not supposed lovely. to talk about Kate's raunchiness at the moment, are we? There's, <laughs> there's this there's this photograph that's circulating oh, at the yes, moment of, um, that. Um, oh, Germany is has used and, and uh, Australia has used that that uh, has uh, that was actually taken by an amateur photographer. All oh, right. Um, and unfortunately, there, there was a, an accident. There was a fashion accident, uh, and uh, rather exposed a little bit more of Kate than she would have wished to. Um, oh, nice. But now, 
has gone viral and, 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 and is now appearing around the world. Um, well, but to save her blushes, let's go to a break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you yet because I have to go to a break anyway, but never mind. But do stay tuned because after the break we'll be seeing a little boy's dream come true. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before I meet my first guest, let's take a look at this fitness tip with Jane Rafter. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to your fitness tip for the day. I'm Jane. I want to show you today um, something that will help to improve your posture. So posture is really important for looking good. You know, you can be a, a slinky size eight, or as a guy, you know, you might be a perfect size in theory, but if you don't carry yourself well, you're not gonna look good. So if you look around when you're on the bus or whatever, you'll see that so many people have slumpy forward shoulders, protruding abdominals, and we need to pull the abs in and draw the shoulders back. I'm gonna show you an exercise that if you do this every day, will really make a difference to your posture. So if you feel, that you're developing sloping shoulders. Maybe you work at a desk a lot, or you drive, or you just have a tendency to do this. This exercise will strengthen the muscles here on the back of the shoulder, as well as the lower back and the upper back, and really help to draw the shoulders back. Okay, so let me get on and show you. If you, if you wanna join in, pop down on the floor with me, and hold hands with yourself behind your back like this. Okay, and then sort of squeeze your shoulder blades together. So I'm lifting the tips of my shoulders away from the floor, and bringing the shoulder blades in towards each other, and then lift your hands off your bum slightly. And then if you just float your chest up like this, it will initiate your back extensors, the muscles in your lower back, and that puts strength in your lower back. So we're gonna lift up. Now I want you to just check my chin. It's tucked in. Okay, so my chin is not here. That'll put pressure in the back of your neck. So stay looking down at the floor, squeeze the shoulder blades, and if you want to work the backs of your arms as well, really lock on your arms and straighten them. And then if you just let go of your fingers without letting your arms float apart, so they stay nice and narrow, and then you can relax. Put your head to one side, let your shoulders come forwards. I'll take you through it again, guys. Okay, so you hold hands with yourself behind your back. You, you bring your shoulder blades in towards each other. Float your hands off your bottom. Push your hands back towards your feet. Float your chest up, straighten your arms. Keep breathing, let go with your fingers and hold. Breathe and hold, keep the shoulders retracted and then relax. Now this doesn't look intense, but trust me, it is. And if you're doing it with me, you'll know. I'm gonna do one more with you guys. Clasp your fingers, float your chest, lift your arms away from your body, release the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades, nice deep breath and relax. Now when you've done a few of those, I'm gonna recommend that you do about eight, okay? Eight at a time. You wanna have a nice stretch, so push yourself up and sit back. And that will just allow your lower back to stretch out as well as the upper back as well. Okay, so get stuck into those and we'll all be walking proud with great posture. Okay guys, see you next time. Thank you to the lovely Jane. So now let's just take a look at this quick clip to introduce my next guest. Look in the mirror and you will see That your dreams were meant to be You can be the one and to die Think you set your heart and don't hold back Reach. 
I'd like to introduce Paul Manners. Hello. 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 How are you? Very well, thank you very much. I'll just rush that recording this afternoon. Oh, bless him. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute while to, to do, wasn't it? It took me about yeah. just over an hour to Aww. do because um, I had to do four takes of the recording yeah. and then um, I exported it into the computer and then edited it through uh, Adobe from okay. yesterday. Well, well done. Thank you for that. <laughs> right. So we've got Thank quite you. a bit to talk about, but you, you do yeah. quite a few things, don't you? So you're, you're a singer-songwriter, yep. event host, yep. event organiser. Yep. What else? <laughs> I do um, mixing, mastering, uh, production. I do videography oh, and um, I do a lot of charity work as well. Very talented and caring. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now, obviously, one thing that I noticed about you immediately is your smile, because you're, you're very smiley, you're very bubbly. Where does all that come from? It's just all the support around me, and it's inspiring like every, everyone that I want to inspire, that mm. um, you know, the way forward is all, it's all about support, and yeah. it's, it's proving to everyone that it can, can be done. And I'm just so happy to make everyone else smile. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's bounced back at me that I smile even more. And be like, <laughs> Everyone's smiling on the show out. today. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Now, tell us a bit about growing up. What, what dreams did you have and what did you want to be? When I've you always wanted to go into music production and entertainment because I love entertainment. Ever since you were little, were you sort of thinking about old. music? Really? Um, I got my first keyboard from my grandmother when I was six. Uh -huh. And uh, from there, I went on to studying music. So I've done my music GCSE and then yeah. I've done my A levels in music, business, IT, and media. And okay. then I've done a degree in music technology technology as well. Wow, okay. So. so, and at the moment, what's the main thing that you're, you're focusing on? I'm um, just focusing on getting my songs out there via mm. my own accord, doing it the hard way, so that everyone else can be inspired by it, and I want to just prove that right example, that, you know, to support others the way that everything yeah. should be done. Okay, and the song that you were singing there, can you tell us a bit about it? Um, it's inspirational, it's, it explains itself, because I, when I write songs, I have other people in my mind because everyone comes over and talks mm -hmm. to me and I've been told that I'm such a good listener that I don't often get a word in when I'm listening to others actually. So That's it's nice, nice. to uh, it's nice to get that chance to talk. Yeah. Well, you get, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's about you can go that extra mile yeah. and you can move a mountain with a smile. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's inspiring everyone in that song. I think we need more of that. Obviously, that's why we do this show as well, is to, to be to And of course, be with that song as well, I wrote it, mixed mm -hmm. it, produced it, because I played the keyboard and mastered it, and I'm releasing yeah. it under my own record label as oh, well. Oh, brilliant. So, <laughs> so quite exciting future for you. It is, yes, yeah. and I just couldn't do it without everyone's support. Mm -hmm. Who, who is it that, that, um, that's helped you along the way? Um, Richard Anderson with his company More Mobile, More Mobile UK and mm -hmm. um, they, they're sponsoring me okay. and uh, they just loves my music. He plays it on radio all the time mm -hmm. and um, a few of my other friends as well. I've got another, another songwriter artist called Ashley Kay as well that I've done a production for as well mm -hmm. and she's got uh, festivals coming up that she's performing in so I'm proud to hear my uh, production work being blasted <laughs> out yeah. and um, of course my good friend Paul Groves as well and um, also I do um, Johnny Pash as well another presenter mm -hmm. him I do a lot of work with him so I'm like walking up the red carpets with him like the Olivier Awards and um, Rio too so I'm not only walking up those carpets I then have to jump grab my camera and then start filming <laughs> as well <laughs> everyone, look, everyone just looks at me good. goes what? <laughs> Doing something different. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> and obviously there must have been a few struggles along the way as well with what you're doing. What, what sort of, have you overcome those difficulties? Um, for example, when my mum passed away, when I was doing um, my degree in music, I ended up taking a two year gap year in the end because wow. I was, cause, um, she suffered from cancer as well. Mm. So I, ha I have a very open heart and soft hearted um, attitude towards like cancer charities and that. Yeah. I'm like, there. Mm -hmm. That's that's it, and no, and uh, like so many wonderful charities that are supporting me back as well. Um, so they're promoting my music, and oh. I'm like, hosting their events for oh, them, while I'm performing at their events. Oh, it's, that's really nice. That's lovely. It's the right thing to do. Definitely. And <laughs> um, um, just for if someone's watching, like maybe some like a young or anyone, anybody actually, some young or or more mature that's watching now and like has a dream, but they're feeling a bit like. Mm, don't know if people support me because I notice you have loads of followers and yeah. you know because you are an inspiring person oh and that God. must, I just, it must just, be impacting people but someone that says oh, I can never 
sort of be liked by people. I'm very insecure. I'm so, I'm so quick on Twitter as well, even with um, like 155,000 followers. Mm -hmm. I'm like bang, bang, bang. I'm there messaging everyone as much as I can and they know this as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's nice to support other people back. And like I've even said to um, some of my fans on Twitter as well, is that I do write a lot of inspirational quotes as yeah. well, which is what I've been through. Mm -hmm. And it's what things that need to be done for everyone to move forward, to have that, to have that confidence, to do mm -hmm. what they're good at doing. You know what? The hardest part is asking for support. Mm. Don't be afraid to do it. Yes, that's always banging on about on this show, opening up and talking to someone. Yes. <laughs> there is help out there when you look for it. There are people that are willing to help you, that are willing to sit down and chat with you and yeah. inspire you. There's always someone out there. Never, yeah. never feel that you're alone. No. Right? Okay, Paul, it's, it's just such a wonderful feeling as well, and so yeah. rewarding, so rewarding to have so much support. And uh, thank you to everyone that's like even watching me on TV today. Thank you. <laughs> so all the best with everything you're doing, thank and you please much. do keep in touch. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Okay, so after the break, we'll be joined by a lady who started her own business, and she'll be talking about the ups and downs. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Hey, welcome back. Now, before we speak to Ian and Helena again, I'd just like to answer this question from a viewer. She says, hi, Chrissy. I've been married for a few years, but my husband lives abroad and advised me to come to the UK to work until he sorts out a few things. He visits, but every time I speak to him about moving here, he makes excuses. I'm always sending money to him and really wanted to start a proper life together. Now I found out that he has moved in with his ex-girlfriend, but he says it's strictly platonic and it was just to save himself some money. I'm fed up of feeling lonely and I'm not sure I believe him about his ex. Every time I threaten to leave him, he turns on the charm and says so many lovely things that I find it difficult to break away. I've given him ultimatums many times, but nothing changes. I don't know what to do. And this is from someone called M. Now, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I think you need to wake up and smell the coffee because he's obviously taking you for a ride here. Um, now, I am all for, you know, trying to work out relationships. You know, I, I think there's too many people getting divorced and they, they give up too easily nowadays. However, I think from what you've said and from what I gather just from what you've, you, you've written here, you have actually tried to resolve a situation. You've spoken to him. I don't know if you've also suggested some kind of counselling, but it seems that from what you've written that he's just taken advantage of you. And the reason why he's, <clears throat> he's still getting away with it is because you're allowing him to, because you haven't sort of, you say you threaten him all the time, but then you don't do anything. And then he thinks, well, I can get away with it. So that's why he keeps doing these things to you. So I would say, value yourself, love yourself. And if I were in your shoes, I would definitely move on and not look back because moving in with his ex-girlfriend, whether it's platonic or not, is a complete no-no. So I, definitely I would, I would move on and don't be afraid of moving on because I know some women especially stay in relationships because they they think oh you know what if I don't find anyone else and you will find someone else and actually let me tell you something sorry guys and I'm, I'm going to get to you in a minute but I have to say I have to talk about this because it makes me really angry when um, I see women and I talk to women as well that are being mistreated in this way because sometimes it's because you don't know what a real relationship is supposed to be like because you've never experienced it. So when I compare, like when I talk, um, talk about my relationship, you know, I look forward to going home. I look forward to spending time with my husband. We have a laugh together. I don't tread on eggshells around him. I can be myself. And it's something so beautiful. And it's like, because some women don't actually know, men even, they don't have, the, they've never had this before. They end up putting up with stuff that really they shouldn't. So I would say, please move on, find yourself a decent man and be happy. That's what I would do. I hope that's helped. And if you would like to also email me, you can do so on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Okay, now before we... <laughs> were you going to say something here? Sorry. Because I wanted to show you a nice video, actually. No, well, what were you right. going to say? All I was going to say was uh, to that lady as well, don't become mm. a doormat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be a doormat. Because, uh, you know, as you know, I, I've talked before about my uh, issues and the yeah, divorce I went yeah. through and so forth. And the thing I learned about life is don't become a doormat because mm. there are so many people who will take advantage of oh, you definitely yeah. you know and, and and they can almost see sort of victim written across That's your face right. 
So, you know, uh, as soon as you decide in life not to become a doormat and to take control of your life, you will feel so much it's better. It's true, it really is mm. true. Thank you. I'm sure, I'm sure she'll do the right thing. Yeah. All right, so let's, ta let's take a look at this video of a lovely little boy whose dream came true. Oh. I'm at Rosendale Primary School today in South London to meet a very special, inspirational little boy called Abel. Abel and his mum have been supported by the charity Well Child. Now the tension is mounting here because in a few minutes time, Well Child have arranged a special treat for Abel. He's about to be picked up by a helicopter and taken on a flight around the skies of London. We've been delighted to work with Whale Child and we've always been inspired by the stories of the, uh, the children and the challenge that they face and the way that their families support them and the work that Whale Child does to support those families too. His mum had said a while ago that he was quite inspired looking at the Olympics and especially the Paralympics which was fantastic. So that was his dream was to go not only helicopter but to fly over the Olympic Stadium and you do think well actually with his spirit who knows in sort of 20 years time that could be him taking part in in either code of the, of the games really because his spirit and his determination are absolutely fantastic. Many of our clients will come from quite privileged backgrounds and will certainly enjoy privileges such as the helicopter flight that you've witnessed today. Um, I think it's really nice to be able to share these sorts of experiences with children that are experiencing somewhat challenging times and their families and I think this is a great opportunity to share some of those opportunities with people who are um, not in that kind of position. Today is the best day in our life honestly. In um, my life. Oh that's brilliant, that's so lovely. Wasn't it? What a oh, great charity as well. Beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> And sometimes oh. it's, it's really good to sort of help put a smile on children's faces, it isn't is. it, I think? No, it's always, not sometimes. It's no, I know, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's lovely to see. Okay, okay moving on. <laughs> um, the old cast of Star Wars have reunited for a new Star Wars Step 7, mm -hmm. which is being filmed at the moment in Abu Dhabi and in London. But oh. the exciting thing is, is that they, they've got a, a charitable initiative at the moment which is Force the Change, um, mm. and it's working with UNICEF, and it's creating creative solutions for big problems um, with children, okay. like oh. abuse and various right. things. Oh, brilliant. So it's, it's yeah. really, really good. But um, within that, um, people, especially Star Wars fans, have got the chance to win a role in the new Star Wars film, oh. which is really exciting, oh, cool. isn't it? <laughs> so which is really great. Um, so you can, you can actually, I think, enrol quite a few times. It's a competition. Oh, that's great. But the lucky person will be. They're, they're, they're filming here. You won't go to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. It's filming here in London. <laughs> oh, well. That bit is London at Pinewood Studios. But, you know, still great. Yeah, that's brilliant. So it's tell me, if, if you went for that, what role would you like? <laughs> who, who would you like to be in Star Wars? Let's put you, you on the spot. You always say Princess Leo, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Let's put you on the spot, Chrissy. R2D2. R2D2. <laughs> I'd like to be Princess Leo with those big. I, I, you know, I've, I've always fancied uh, being Darth Vader myself. I, 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 being I, 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 wicked. I, 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 this sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is my only yeah. chance yeah. to be it wicked. It will not work, trust me. <laughs> it's my only chance to be wicked. And, oh, and uh, so uh, I, I promise I wouldn't talk too much about Star Wars because I, I worked on the first Star Wars. Did uh, you? Yeah, I did. Oh. Um, but, As what? Um, what? Doing what? Oh, oh, I do all sorts of things, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> sort of could screw things into us. people and so forth. But um, uh, the, the guy who did Star Wars uh, and, and who did Darth Vader, Dave Prowse, unfortunately I don't think is, is living anymore. But he was such a gentle giant. He was the most marvellous man. Mm. Uh, and, and I worked alongside him for quite a few years because he had a gymnasium as well. And I, I worked in a studio just below the floor that he actually owned at the same time. And he had this Ooh. wonderful Bristol accent. So he always talked like that. You're, uh -huh. you're right, boy. You know? So, so they, they could never use his voice on Darth oh. Vader. Because <laughs> he just... With he us, just Huh? He's still with us, I think. Still no, I think Dave Prowse has died, but, uh, but he, he, he's, he's suffering. Better make sure people... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be another one of those, isn't it? He might be watching. He's going to be ringing you off soon. Hang on, I can feel a buzz in my pocket now. <laughs> oh, oh, God. You could have buried him already. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, Will I Am. Yes. Will I Am. He was actually chucked out of United <laughs> Airlines first class lounge. Naughty, naughty, why? Well, he was told, they, they chucked him out because they said that his ID or his pass was fake. So, of course, he was absolutely outraged about it. 
because like, apparently, don't you know who I am? Yeah, it was a bit like that. Yeah. He made a protest and he was tweeting. It just goes to show you see, tweets are very good for things like that. So he was appalled about it, especially as the pilot had a selfie, you know, wanted a selfie with him. And it was all this <laughs> vows, but can you imagine? Oh, but you, you've got an issues with Will I Am's yourself at the moment, oh, haven't you? Uh, at the moment, working on a, a commercial for a well known car product. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's, it's going to be shot in Italy in the next couple of weeks. Ooh. So yeah, nice. we've got a double as well working with him. So okay. we're trying to find the double, but you know, it needs to be someone who looks like him with a, a clean driving license. And I've got about 15 Anyone people. Anyone that looks like what I am with a clean driving license. 15 people on my book. <laughs> Contact but, Helena. Yeah. Who can sing, dance. <laughs> that can do the whole thing. I mean, it's an exciting thing to fly it to is. Italy and work with yeah. him, but it's proving uh, difficult. Difficult, I'm sure yeah. there must be quite a few. Yeah, the likes. there are about fifteen, but yeah. no one with a clean driving license. <laughs> but I'm sure I'm sure we'll work through it somehow. Oh, so that's quite exciting. Um, Fiona Fullerton. Yes. And the trees. <laughs> Would you like I, to talk about Fiona Fullerton? I know about Fiona Fullerton yeah. and the trees. I actually work with yeah. strange enough. Ian, you really get around. <laughs> I, I do. Have I you do. noticed well, everyone we talk about? He says, "Well, yeah, actually, well I used to work." I, with I, I, don't, I don't know the trees personally, but I do know Fiona Fullerton. <laughs> I've worked with Fiona Fullerton. She's yeah, an ex-bonder. And, and, uh, she's the ex-bonder, and uh, she's bought this home in uh, Wiltshire now, or Ooh. Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Yeah, Gloucestershire. And uh, apparently, she sort of uh, cut these trees down in, on her estate. Um, there are some Big cypress like, trees. Yeah, there's something like about 300 trees. years old oh, or something. God. And now yeah. it's you know, caused all sorts of problems with the local council. You know, yeah. for doing I so. think it's more to do with the neighbours who are absolutely outraged because oh, there's beautiful trees there. And of course, oh, gosh, once that's, you that's, cut that's that a down, crime, isn't it, really? Sorry, I love nature and I love I trees do too. and flowers and but stuff. But apparently she did speak to the council. And, and, and she spoke to the trees as well. No, she didn't. I did that one but I think that, do you know what? We get so carried away that I miss when they give me the, the breaks, the, the oh. cue breaks. Sorry, I'm sorry, guys. We have to go to a break. Oh, Thank you very much. That's it. Yes, that's it. That's we it. have so much more news. That's All right. Well, if our next guest doesn't turn up, you're going to have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We're still waiting for a guest. So <laughs> do join us after this break. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we meet our next guest, let's take a look at this video. Feels like we're imprisoned in unwritten words. As you can see, here I am at the Song Academy. Now today I've come down to speak to the organisers and some of the young songwriters to find out why writing can help express thoughts and emotions and also how it gives them a platform to be heard. So here with Jessica, one of the songwriter leaders. Um, so what got you involved with helping these young people learn how to write songs? Um, well, I was actually referred to it by a friend at my music school. Um, I did a professional diploma in songwriting and I was looking to kind of extend that and help other young children and young people get involved in expressing themselves through music and through songwriting. So, what's your springboard when you start to write songs? Jessica. Um, it's your inspiration, what you get, like if you've if something's happened to you recently and you want to write da write about it. But I said I'll never leave your side since you've left. I have seen so many kids kind of come to Song Academy with problems that they can't express to their parents or teachers or friends, and the way that they can do it is through a song. They use metaphors, they use imagery to help kind of deal and understand and work through their issues. It's, it's quite a kind of therapeutic sort of exercise. Um, my name is Jolska. I love music, it's uh, my main passion and I've always loved listening to music and I feel like songwriting is a way of like expressing myself you know, in a creative way. Songwriting sometimes like, especially at like our specific age, um, you know, some things that you don't really, like personal kind of things and so you can, as putting them in words and music, it can be a more hidden way of expressing it. What sort of things do you like to write about? Um, about people, children, children, mostly children, when they're lonely or with families. I'm lost in you, 
Why I gravitated towards Song Academy was because growing up as a boy especially, you wasn't encouraged to do music. You know, you might do a bit of rapping here and there, but you wasn't encouraged to sing about how you felt. And if you look at kids now, they, you know, when they're growing up, they'll, they'll go to football training, tennis, some, all these things that they, they use to get out their feelings, but they don't really get out their feelings. You know, you, you're told to kick a ball or hit the bat, but with songwriting, even they don't know how much they're telling us when they're writing, that they'll say, you know, if we say, is that song about you? They'll go, no, but, you, but just through the writing and the way they're singing it, you can see how they're getting their feelings out and they're expressing themselves. And that's why I was just like, yeah, I've got to be a part of this. Thank you very much and welcome back. Now, things don't always go according to plan on TV and today is one of those days. However, we've decided to improvise and I have some special guests here with me. Shall we say hello? <laughs> They're back. We, we are <laughs> your news hounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, this is what happened, everybody. We were expecting uh, the lovely Michelle. Shall we join you? Um, and she was actually a business owner of Poor Perfection Pet Boutique. She's, she was coming all the way from Wales and with her two little dogs that were also going to feature on the show. Have a seat, have a seat, don't worry. Who were also going to feature on the show. And unfortunately, she had a break, not a break, she didn't have a breakdown when she broke down <laughs> <laughs> on the motorway and she, she can't make it. So now we're going to just talk about anything, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Such a shame. I was so looking forward to seeing two little cuddly <laughs> doggies. Was it two doggies? Yeah, two little doggies oh. right now. Well, you, 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 were next time. you were going to talk to her about uh, having a dog business. Yes. And uh, years ago, I used to be an animal photographer. I don't know if you know. No, um, I didn't. This is another one of his, <laughs> none of my, his special skills. <laughs> and I used to specialise, strange enough, in dog stories. Oh. And uh, I, I used to work for a newspaper called The News of the World. No longer exists. Oh, yes. um, and they sent me down one day to actually sort of photograph this dog who had been made the chairman of a company. And someone had actually worked out that if the dog was the chairman of the company and they transferred all the money to the dog, <laughs> yeah. the company couldn't be taxed. Oh. Oh, and there was a oh. loophole in the law. <laughs> this is oh, true. Oh, it's quickly changed. Money to the dog. This, 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 was, this was a true story. Yes, true story. I bet they changed so, that straight away. Of course though. they have. Everyone else would be doing it, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I, I arrived at the house. <laughs> I, I arrived at a house. Um, and the, the sort of door opened. The owner comes out and she said, you're not afraid of dogs. I said, no, I'm not afraid of dogs. Come on in. So I walk in down this long passageway. It was a big bungalow. And uh, she said, you're sure you're not afraid of dogs? I'm not afraid of dogs, no, no problem at all. So, so then she says, let him out. And there's oh. this... Oh, no. This, this uh, dog, Pony, came <laughs> spinning around the corner. And it was oh. a great day. Oh, oh but they're gentle, aren't they? They're lovely. Yeah, so they I, I, having dogs myself, I always used to give the palm of my hand to any dog because they can actually scent a happy scent from your own dogs. Mm. And, it, and it's a nice oh. greeting. It's a nice greeting. So it was like a slow action from a Bond movie. As, as I was sort of holding my hand out, this dog's jaws opened. <gasps> and my whole, hand went, in, my, my whole hand went inside this dog's oh, mouth. Oh, no. And uh, so I thought, oh, well, that, that's fine. And, uh, and the, the, the lady owner turned around and she said, oh, that's good, he likes you. <laughs> he likes you. So, so, but then... The dog wouldn't let go of my hand. So now I'm actually trying to get to my camera bag and I'm pulling this dog <laughs> around the carpet on, or on this wooden floor, you know, um, but with, was the dog with my hand. Was no, it wasn't biting you? No, it wasn't biting me at all. It and wasn't the lynx effect, was it? No. <laughs> and, and, and then after a few minutes, this lady said, um, You're probably wondering why he hasn't let go of your hand. And I thought, What? Well, it was. That really. would be nice to I, know. It was really. And she said, it's my husband's fault. And I thought, OK, oh, I've oh. heard everything now. And she said, uh, he has this trick with the dog where he holds a polo mint inside his hands and he places his hand inside the dog's oh. mouth. The dog's jaws close, but only sort of gently. He drops the polo mint off the dog's tongue and the, and the jaws oh, open up again. But they didn't... They didn't but you don't have a first. polo mint, so what yeah. do you do with no polo mint? So, so in the end, we priced this dog's <laughs> jaws open <laughs> with a jimmy. <laughs> Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, <laughs> great days are beautiful. But, but sometimes oh. you get some sort of strange stories with dogs' businesses. So oh, I thought yeah. I thought I would bring that one in. Talk oh, about, that was such a so, happy yeah, vibes so. as well because mm. he was talking about you know um, realised that you were friendly and happy. But it's um, it's National Smile Month. 
Do you know what? People should smile. smile. You, right? yeah, yeah, you do. That's, that's what it's so <laughs> infectious, isn't it? It's like, really, it makes you feel good as well. It does. And people respond. So it's that general, you know, spreading that loving feeling. Which so is you get really cramps in your cheeks. It doesn't matter, we should still do it anyway, right? Absolutely. Which is great. It's yeah, nice I think yeah, it's, it is smile. really important to smile at people because yeah. there's so many... I don't know, if you're just walking down the street, you see so many grumpy people. And sometimes it's not because they're actually grumpy, it's just maybe they've got something on their mind and they're thinking about something, but just sort of to actually look at someone. Because mm. how often, for example, do you notice the bus driver? Or you just Absolutely. go and pop it's your card on and you just walk straight. You don't even you don't even yeah. sort of look at him sometimes. You, know, well, you know what a smile probably makes his day actually. Yeah. Because yeah. it would make mine. Yeah, it makes everyone's day. Yeah. Now actually I was watching a programme once, they were they were interviewing some bus drivers and one bus driver actually <laughs> said it really made my day when someone well, actually so, so just so said thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. Something and that's it. So as it's that. like something so Oh. So let's all be smiling at this. I very, I very rarely get buses because I'm always driving, but every time I get off the bus, I always shout down and go, thank you! Yeah. <laughs> I always do that. Who it's do you politeness. think is one, one national smile? Who do you think is the person that's, that's won the title? I think yes. it's Wrigley's, actually, Me. that's holding it. Well, apart <laughs> from you, <laughs> lovely Chrissy. <laughs> so You've got a lovely smile. smile. <laughs> Everyone's had this now from the show as well. <laughs> Do we, do you, would you no, know? I don't know. It's Kate Middleton. Who's really? Like, she's like, yeah. She has got a lovely smile, though, hasn't she? She has, yeah. She's amazing. But actually, I think National Smile Week is, is also for oral health. Absolutely. It's nice when you get a genuine person that's really down to earth smiling as well. She's won two yeah. awards, and one for smiling and one for her hair. Yeah, for her oh. thick hair. So, so obviously, you know, she, she's her winning hair, again. Hair 2014. Is she it? She has got really thick. Okay, well, let's, hair. let's stop chatting now because we've reached the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't too bad, was it, guys? It was great improvisation. We had nothing to talk about, <laughs> and then we just created something. So, and I think we've, we've uh, finished on a nice. So a nice well, note, a nice happy well, note, because nice. we're talking about smiling. So please yes. do smile. And even if you're feeling a bit down, smile anyway, and good things will come your way. Absolutely. Okay? So thanks, everybody. And I said well, goodbye to them. Well. It's the second time I'm saying goodbye to them because they keep popping back. But this is it now. We really, are finishing, we really are finishing the show. So thanks for watching. If you want more information about the programme, you can visit the website, chrissybisha.tv. And also don't forget to like our Facebook page, The Chrissy Bisha. Bye-bye for now.